Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Nexus Gaming Series. I am your caster, Bahamut. On the left-hand side, we've got the members of Gilly Shark, and on the right, it is going to be Few Loose Screws. This is a Division A matchup for Nexus Gaming Series. Thank you all so much for joining me. I very much appreciate it. Welcome, everybody, you beautiful creatures. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for being in chat. Hi to everybody. Miss Windup Bird, thank you for being here. How are you doing? Chess Looter, Linehouse, Angus, BM, I love you all. Thank you for being here. Really quickly, before we get into some of these uh, bands, I just want to quickly highlight Aberworm. Thank or Aberworm and too. veggies off dibs. Thank you so much for the 68 bits, keeping it very PG right there. As well as shout out to Slavic. Thank you so much for the five months of support, my friend. Thank you so much for your Twitch Prime subscription. While all this is happening, let's go ahead and take a peek at I know those delicious map bands. You're so very curious to find out about. The home team Subscribe. this evening is going to be Gilly Shark, and guess what? They lost the coin flip. The uh, the members of Few Loose Screws went for first pick priority. That means that the map choice goes over to Gilly Shark. So they banned out Battlefield of Eternity and Dragonshire. Braxis Holdout and Alterac Pass were banned out by Few Loose Screws, and Cursed Hollow will be our first map chosen by the members of Gilly Shark. And let's go ahead and get back into our draft because I'm just itching to find out what we actually get here. Cursed Hollow, I guess Kaima lost the coin flip. <laughs> <laughs> That's so very good. Um, welcome, Kage. Thank you for coming by. Carson, how you doing? Thanks for coming by, bud. Romedy MC. Du boy, how you doing, bud? Thanks for being here. Um, in between game one and two, I think we're going to do a quick giveaway. I definitely have something, so we'll figure that out. We'll set that up in between games. Regardless, though, let's actually get into the draft that we've had unfolding in front of our faces that we haven't talked about whatsoever. We have this Diablo and Abathur on the right-hand sides. That's a good one right there. But let's talk about bands first. Anubarak and Ana will be banned out on the side of Gilly Shark. They don't want to deal with the dive as well as the uh, the range support that Ana can bring, as well as the nano boost is such a high, such a powerful tool. The uh, target ban against basically one he one player. It looks like we're going to be getting the uh, Samuro banned out as well as the. Uh, Medivh right there, so they're not going to be able to see either of those this game. We've seen Stark in the past play very, very strong on those two heroes. We'll see if that mitigates them much, but Zergi is going to be on that Dahaka and Chess Looter. It's going to be on the D er, uh, on the Greymane. I was going to say I just, I can't talk all today apparently. So Dahaka and Greymane so far on the left-hand side. They have that global pressure. They're going to be having uh, that great siege pressure as well. <laughs> Kage, you pretty happy about that? <laughs> Oh, it's it's too good. It's too good. I don't know who did co coin flip, but I'm assuming it's Kaimo because they're the captain, right? Jaina is going to be banned out because that's a strong synergy with the Diablo, and we have a Zeratul being banned out against the members of Gilly Shark. They don't want to deal with that harassment of the backline, potentially. We have, let's see, Dahaka Greymane. Ooh, Taronda picked up as well as a Joanna. Strong... Strong front line so far, great back line as well. Toronto Greyman, I really like those two together. And then just overall, the Dahaka can pop up and be new division, same target bands. <laughs> Last two picks going to be coming out from the members of Few Loose Screws. Let's see, Abathur, Diablo, Stukov, Svala will be the next pickup, and Chen. Pandemonium. Yes. Zarya, ready for duty. Azaria here, so we're gonna be getting a we're gonna be getting a support on top of all this. Triple frontline ish. Zarya was considered a bruiser in the past, but she's more so a support uh, because of the shielding that she can pr provide. And she's got okay wave clear. She can she can hold the lane a little bit so on her own. But into the gray main, that's gonna be really really powerful to be able to shield them and then provide some some extra sustain in some of these fights is just such a powerful tool. I really like that overall. Oh, bud. He's just sitting there with his mouth open, just like, just like breathing heavily. And I was just like, I just, I looked over at the other monitor. I was like, is it really that hot in here? I have to look at the, I have to look at the heat, like the temperature in the house, not the heat. That, that has been shut off for a while, but. It's definitely been hot lately. <laughs> yeah. Also, he got like, he got a walk at like probably like peak temperature today outside. So like we got back and he was just pooped. And I was like, all right, cool. Like you are. You are you are kaput for the evening. We're just gonna we're just gonna relax and it's gonna be a nice, easy, fun night. But we got games. We're loading in here. Let's go ahead and check out game number one between these two teams. Prepare yourself for battle. 
On the left hand side, we got the members of Gilly Shark. We're going to be having veggies on the Joanna. Kaimo Tripson going to be on that Taronda. Chess Lutero will be on the Grey Main. Stark will be on the Zarya. And we have uh, Zergy Monster rounding out the team on the Dahaka. On the right hand side, we've got the members of a few, or excuse me, I want to say a few, but a few loose screws. We've got a uh, real rag going to be on the Chen. Uh, AK, oh no, Akash, I think it is. Akash, maybe? I'm going to say Akash uh, is going to be on the Vala. A Brewer, too, is going to be on that Abathur. Wipeout will be on the Diablo. And Lumpico is going to be on the Stukov. Let's go ahead and check out our mid lane as there's no one there. They've got Greymane. Shield. Greymane's going to just auto into this, and this is just going to be also... Here's the big thing, too, is look at this anchoring from Veggies, just getting the dismount and slowing them down. They know that they won't be able to get the kill, so they're just going to try and take out one of the towers and also that front wall. That's big. And the reason why... Uh, why One of the reasons I like that is because of the fact that it, it just means that you can try to... You can push into Abathur a little bit harder. Opening up these lanes and taking out the front gates forces Abathur back a little bit further in some of these games. That was your Brito the other day. Not as good as if you had gotten tacos, I'm sure. <laughs> I've had tacos from from that place. It's called Jalisco's Grill. And I've had, I would say, like, I've gotten chicken quesadilla from them. I've gotten burritos from them. And I've gotten tacos from them. And they're all good. It's just what you want that day. Like, I could, like, Friday, I could totally go for a chicken quesadilla from them. They're so good. They're, like, the size of my face. And they're, like, a dollar. It's more like five. But still, let's actually focus in on the games. Tacos and burritos are delicious. But we got here is the storm in front of us. And that will be... Bala going down in the initial start of this, and Wipeout is going to be getting picked off as well. If it wasn't the grenade from Stark, it was going to be the follow-up from the from Kaimo Tripson right there. This top lane siege is insane right now, completely opening this up. And the one thing that I want to note is that we have a Grey Main, and Grey Main, as I noted in the, in the cast right before this in our replay cast, sieges extremely well, and we're actually seeing a great example of that right now. The other thing to note too is that Stark on the Zarya is providing shielding for themselves, so anchoring for the friendly team, and they're taking that damage. You can see they're actually cycling through how the tower is going to be firing on some of them. Well, you saw it there for a second as it was on it was on Stark as, and then they ooh, this they don't have any sort of friendly bubbles, and Chess Looter is going to be thrown around a little bit there. That's going to be a Bit of an overextension coming out from the members of Gilly Shark as First Blood will be going over in or First Blood for the members of a few, a few loose screws are going to be picked up are going to be found right there. I can I swear I can talk. There we go. And uh, let's do our favorite thing. Let's check vision. Let's get an idea of what it looks like right now. We got vision for Stark, and this is going to be Zergy Monster pushing da pushing up that bottom lane. They can see the Vala in the top, and they know that there was a Chen in mid there for a second. Let's do the exact same thing on the right hand side. Why is my, my tool is just not working? Uh, there we go. Okay. Gather tribute. Some some's all buggy about it. Um, there was someone named Brewer Two not playing Chen. Then what a shame. <laughs> I, I actually think I, I, I follow a brewer or two on Twitter and it, it just like I said that name and I was like, oh, I know who you are. <laughs> I actually know quite a few of these. I, I know who Ragnarok is. I know who uh, I know Lampico. I know I've seen Wipeout's name. I think I've ca cast them before. These Gilly Sharks. I don't know who the heck these people are. Brewer two though. This this bug. There's no way. There's no way the bug gets away. Just poetry in motion unfortunately and that's just going to be the abathur getting picked off right there first objective will be picked up in favor for the members of uh i want to say a few loose screws we'll probably say that most of the game but uh loose screws is going to excuse me few loose screws is going to be able to grab that first one meanwhile though the members of Gilly Shark are just saying, cool, top lane is our jam. We're just going to push in through top lane and you can respond if you want. De uh, Dehaker was holding down bottom lane a little bit. This is going to be the harsh from the majority of the team. And we're three, min three, three minutes, 30 seconds into this game and they're already taking out the keep front gate. And this will be just that they're getting some shielding. They're getting some healing from Taronda as well. They're so very low. Nine health was the lowest that I saw it get to. And they're going to be able to make it out of here. That will be the Lunar Flare as well. They mount up and they disengage. That is... If they got picked off there, that would have been just that would have been huge momentum in favor for the members of a few, a few loose screws. It's such a great pickup from them in that case because this is going to be an objective coming up. They don't have that gray main. They're going to be 4v5, and they'll be able just to hold it over. Granted, also Abathur kind of makes that up 4v5 and maybe a little bit easier, even, more even in the fight. Regardless, 7 to 6 in levels, and we're going to be starting to just... This, uh, this experience right now just... 1,145 and left to 477. It's 3 to 1 in kills, but just, you can see that it's, it's 3 kills has yielded almost just a little bit more than half of the ex uh, hero kill experience. It's just something something I've been highlighting lately is just 
sometimes people ton of vision on hero kills, and you can see right there, it's not worth it all the time. We can also get an idea of what the healing numbers look like right now. As they, uh, they jump down to bottom lane, and they're gonna start pushing this out aggressively like we saw on the top, and we have Dahaka now on top, so they're just rotating around these lanes and just changing out how they're going for this pressure. That's gonna be... Um, we actually have the Joanna down here as well. Lurking arm from Lampico as well. Lunar Flare not connecting. Sidewalls are gonna be just forcing them through this this little bit of a tighter choke point, but that's gonna be Stark stepping up, trying to get some damage from the tower as well, just to build up that damage. They throw the shielding onto Chess Looter, who will be stepping forward. Targeted by the tower, and that's gonna be the Lunar Flare going out as well. They disengage from the Worgen form and continue to push Excuse me, through the bottom lane. Look at Dahaka on top though. On our minimap we can see Dahaka in top lane, and this is going to be just Push coming in from Zergi Monster this entire time, just forcing this wave up, and Abathur trying to get some value with these minions, just trying to disengage from all of that. Meanwhile, looking at the vision for the opposing side, Chen is actually in mid lane, or Chen's the only one in really in lane that they would maybe be able to catch. Actually, Sentinel just came through onto Wipeout, so they do have the vision onto them right there. And now they can see the Greymane popping up over on this left-hand side. They're going to have to give this over, especially because the momentum and the um, the pressure so far coming out from the members of Ghillie Shark is extremely powerful. Um, hey, Zoo Rules, how you doing, bud? Maybe next game. I must have missed something. You don't need to zoom on his dead body, but <laughs> that unseen eye. <laughs> All right, we've been drafted by Gilly against the uh, first pick, Abba. I will say this. I was, it was one thing that I, w I wanted to notice as we were getting in this game. The nice shadow charge from Wipeout right there, but they still get the... The, the boss is still in their favor. That's going to be the explosion zone coming out from Stark right there. They also have the cursed bullet. There was a shadow stock from the Toronto. This Chen is trying to kick their way up, but they go down as well. The one thing I want to note is that we, I've seen a lot of Abathurs versus Dahakas, and I think that was a really, really smart pickup in grabbing the the Dahaka for this... Did, I think a Brewer 2 canceled that, that, uh, that burrow into top. Either way, it's just I think I think uh, Dahak is such a great answer because he's able to clear out the waves. He's able to then just he's able to mitigate a lot of that Abathur pressure and able to rotate through lanes very very quickly. Towers of Doom is actually a really great case of that where we see it quite often. Eleven to nine in levels, they're going to be pushing up and taking a keep sub seven minutes here. And look at that damage from that lurking arm. Real rag is so very low as they're going to try and drink through the pain, but they're going to be going down the Abathur hat not enough, and that will be Dahaka with the channel onto this curse goes forward in favor for the members of Gilly Shark as they are going to be going up onto this core. There's no way. Did we just... Did Division A decide to do a speedrun category all of a sudden? Because the members of Gilly Shark are trying to end the game sub... Oh. That's game number one. Going over to Gilly Shark. Seven minutes and 20 seconds. GG. Run it down. Zua rules. Run it down. <laughs> yeah. Uh... I've taught them enough about countering ABBA and Draft. That's true, Kage. Yo, Joe, how's it going? Thanks for coming by. Step one, run it down. Step two, profit. <laughs> Few loose groups would have been fine if they didn't finish uh, finish it with Chen. They needed a different bruiser uh, with threat and clear, like a Maev. Seven minute game, wow, I agree. I actually, you know, Snag, I, I agree with that. I don't know if I like the Maev so much as like, I would have liked to see something like a, like a, um, like an Imperius. I think an Imperius would have worked really well with their draft. I think it would have also been a great clone target if they wanted to go into that. Just more CC. Follow up into the Diablo as well. I think he's got his own uh, level of sustain in some of these fights. And I think that was what they lacked a lot of. I mean, Chen, yeah, I can drink through some of the pain, but not effectively enough. Wow. Um, I want to do a giveaway really quickly while we're getting set up for our next game. But I don't know if I can do it quick enough. All right, let's... Oh, Ooh, I almost hit that button. Wait, what? I just got a message from the winner telling me what map they want to go to, and I'm really confused. Oh! <laughs> I had no idea what they were, what they were like. Okay, cool. I'll set up. I'll get lobby going. All right. Um, all right. Let's see. Can we can we do a giveaway really quickly? Can we set this up? 
Don't know if my uh, Felix Cruz plays my app. That's true too. That's something to consider as well. Sonia Ab is scary too. I w I'm not opposed to the uh, Sonia Abathur. I should probably invite people to the lobby that I made. Set to referee, tournament draft, no match history, team two. Imo Tripson just invited himself. <laughs> um, I don't know where Wipeout is. Hold on. Wipeout's there. Invite to game. Um, let me update the team scores because I'm bad at, at being a caster, apparently. Um, all right, giveaways. Let's see. How are we going to do this? Active? No, we're going to use a keyword, and we're gonna, the keyword is going to be butts. B-U-T-T-S. And uh, subscribers will get a little extra luck. And uh, mods will be regular. Oh, nope. Yeah, everyone's allowed. All right. Um, yeah, so type butts in chat. I think that's all I have to do. Type the word butts in chat and, and uh, we got a prize. We'll do it like at the end of the, we'll do it right at the end of the draft as we're like loaded in, loading in. I hope, I think it should work. Is the prize bandit? No, it's not. Butt slam. Kage, that counted. <laughs> Just so you know, that counted. All right. Um, yeah, Angus Lee, I see you in there. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, hat for Stark. Cool. Going to be doing that. Set to captain. That's all set. R. Um, I need to update one thing in my background as well. Um, that, 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 that. Uh, no, I don't have a ready from team two. Yes. Yes. All the butts in chat. All the butts in chat. <laughs> yeah, all you, li you literally just need to type in butts. Let's see. Can I properties? There you go. You can see everybody who's entered so far. All right. All righty. Uh, we're going to pull this away. We'll, we'll pull this at the end of the draft, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get into our next game. Game number two, we are going to be finding ourselves in... Temple. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, let's go ahead and get on into this. On the left hand side, we got the members of Gilly Shark up one game in our best of three series, and on the right is going to be Few Loose Screws. As I said, this is a best of three for the Nexus Gaming series. It is a Division A matchup. If you're sitting at home and you're wondering why we're on Sky Temple, I got you covered. Don't worry. We had the members of Gilly Shark lose the coin flip. Few Loose Screws went ahead and prioritize map pick or first pick for their uh for their coin win so they're gonna go ahead and have the priority onto that in game one at least we are gonna be having battlefield of eternity as our first map sorry i'm just trying to fix something in the background here so battlefield of eternity was our first ban as well as uh, dragon shire from the members of gilly shark few loose screws ba banned out braxis holdout and alterac pass first map was cursed hollow chosen by gilly shark and won by them they opted for first pick for game number two on the side of few loose screws and sky temple will be our game number two on the side of gilly shark let's get back into this as we have our bands already coming through. Same as before, so we don't need to highlight those, but Grey Main Tyrael at the start on the left-hand side, a Dahaka on the right, gonna be trying to play that. Uh, I swear to God, if Gilly Juice Pirates... Snag, what do you mean? Ew, Pirates, it's dis it's dishonorable? Hold on. Show me in the, in the Division A, in the Division A rules where... Oh, look, a distraction flies away in medevac. All right, so we are going to be having Stukov and Joanna uh, prioritize on the right-hand side with the Dahaka. So good uh, map or global value from the Dahaka as well as Stukov is going to be able to uh, <laughs> go ahead and... Why do... It's... 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 It's Juice Pirates, isn't it? Like, they're doing it. They're d yeah. With that, though, they're going to go ahead and grab themselves a Zeratul. Was it all a ploy all along to get the Zeratul for themselves? Let's go ahead and find out here. <laughs> Gasp, I'm distracted. <laughs> Thank you so much, Zeratul. 
Oh, thank you all for being here. You're so amazing. Um, last pick, or at least for now, last pick going to be coming out from Gilly Shark. They could go for their main support right now and hold off on their on their solo lane, and that's actually going to be the case right now. They're going to go for that Uther, um, for that Ulhar Uther on the uh, on the left hand side. Going to be able to pick that up right there, and then so last two picks coming out from the members of uh, Fulu Screws. Dahaka, Stukov, Joanna. They need to support as well as they definitely need to find some damage here. Kerosene might offer a little bit more so they can have a little more damage on top of... Because otherwise they're just going to have like a hyper carry on the Vala or something like a um, a Maiev, if possible. Snag was mentioning that in draft, but it's going to be a Kael'thas Hanzo. I'm a potato and didn't count Stukov there. I'm a lot more tired than I thought I was going into this best of three. I was like, they need a support. They don't have much. And just like Stukov's right there. Come on, Bahamut. <laughs> uh, why is this happening? Oh, good. Uh, baits a Morales ban and plays the standard Tyrael comp. <laughs> was it all a ruse? Last pick going to be coming out here. It's going to be a Malfeel. Okay. I like this. All right, let's roll. Let's roll our uh, sneaky. Very sneaky. All right, let's. We're gonna. We're gonna jump out of this because what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll our winner for. This, we had enough people. Let's see, who is going to roll and win? Um, BM, congratulations. Please message me in Discord. And I will send you your, uh, your, your winning prize. That sounds like I don't have anything. I do. I have a whole spreadsheet of, of things to, to give away. That I'm slowly, and I promise that I will be giving away because I'm so sick of having a bunch of things to give away and not actually giving them away. So, uh, please message me. Um, bum 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 bum. Oh, phew. I read something, it was like, uh, so I have, I have ETC and Murky codes, but they're region locked to EU and Asia, so just, woo, just make sure I don't give those away. But, um, BM, if you're missing any heroes, please let me know, and I'll, uh, I'll get you a, a code for one of them, potentially. Otherwise, we'll share the love somehow, some way. Either way, we got ourselves into our next game. Let's go ahead and get on into it. On the left-hand side, we got the members of Gilly Shark, with Chess Looter going to be on the Grey Main. Zer Zergy Monster will be on the Malthiel. Veggies is going to be on the Tyrael. Kaimo Trips will be on the Uther. And Stark will round out the team on the Zeratul. God, that tongue just... That's a thing. On the right-hand side, we got the members of Few Loose Screws trying to bring it back to take us to a Game 3 on Sky Temple. Wipeout going to be on the Dahaka. A Brewer 2 going to be on the Joanna. We have uh, Akash... I think it's Akash is going to be on the uh, Kael'thas. Real Rag or Ragnarok is going to be on the Hanzo. And Lumpico rounds out the draft on the Stukov. Let's go ahead and get on into this. It's a prize, mystery prize. I basically have a bunch of hero codes and skin codes. And so I would like to give them away to people who would like to have hero codes and skin codes. <laughs> it's a prize, yeah. It, it sounded so like, just like, like, I totally have something for people. Mystery prizes, ooh. Yeah. I just, I have a bunch of hero codes and I have some skin codes, so, um, if you're missing anything, BM, we can, we can chat. You have me on Discord, we can, we can talk all about it, and we'll figure something out. But, Stark, gonna be picked off here, first blood of the game, gonna be going over in favor for the members of Few Loose Screws, as they have the friendly team rotating down here, gonna be catching them just a little bit late. We can actually go ahead and provide that little vision tool right there, so we can check that out as needed. And uh, right now we're just looking at Wipeout versus Sergi Monster in this top lane. We'll keep an eye on this on this solo lane matchup. I always like watching these as much as possible because we don't get to highlight that as much. But, oh my god, Sergi Monster is just trying to... The, the double backs right now coming out. They also have that Ana Pale Horse, so they've got a little bit of speed um, uh, increase, and they're kind of matching that from Wipeout. But down here we have a Camp Invade coming out from the members of Fuelu Screws. That's going to be a lot of damage going on to Veggies. They go down. Tyrael now going to be trying to get that value in from the, from the trait, but unfortunately it's not enough. Also, Wipeout went for the Brush Dock down to the bottom, so... A lot was used just to try and steal this away, and more or less, they're gonna get, yes, a kill, but they're gonna they're not gonna be getting any value from said siege camp. Stukov will be going over the right hand side. These uh school bus size damaged arms are gonna be coming in. Three convection stacks. Oh wait. <laughs> okay, come on now. <laughs> uh Alrighty, let's see. Zergy Monster still on top. Level four is here. 
It's a little bit of a, a little bit of a lead when it comes to this experience in favor for the members of Few Loose Screws. I'm gonna spread that pustule around. We also have the reactive ballista spores for that Stukov. I've actually been seeing that from quite a lot of Stukovs lately. Playing that quite a bit. I've I've saw it most of the time. I feel like I would see it on um Infernal Shrines here and there, and but mostly on like Towers of Doom. And now I feel like I'm seeing it almost on every single map. A lot of a lot of Stukov players going for that reactive ballista spores, which I do like. It's it's just it's just another way to keep your friendly members alive and just kind of have that as a as have that kind of pop as necessary. Top lane does have a bruiser camp coming in here, but the same thing will be on the right hand side. Few loose is gonna be grabbing their own. Really good camp rotation so far from both these teams and with that, let's get some uh, vision for, for the members of Ghillie Shark as they're going to be pushing up in this top lane, see how they're posturing. They can only see the Dahaka and they know that Joan is in bottom. They're missing a couple members across the board here. Uh, Kael'thas just showed in mid lane so they can continue to push this up. That means that there's no major sort of wave clear going into them. On the opposing side, we're going to take a look right now and just see. They can see that there's two in bottom so they know that this top lane pushes only three members. With that, they're going to rotate in, but the vision was going to be in favor for Ghillie Shark so they know that aggression's coming up and they'll just back right out of there. Not going to be losing out on anyone or getting uh, caught out of position and they'll step up onto this point for a couple seconds they'll get one or two shots off from it and now the chess looter and friends are looking for a way out of this as they need to get behind the gate chess looter gets a one razor swipe can they get another right out of there and they're going to be fine from now that will be kalthos getting the chain bond on onto a couple meanwhile we have veggies in this mid lane going to be going ahead and sitting on the uh first altar phase going to be getting some decent value top lane we have wipeout on this as well i think these are just going to be traded out a brewer two and, and akash are going to be stepping down here trying to force veggies off the point and the big thing to note on for anyone who doesn't know if a hero from uh from the opposing side is also on the point as yourself so red and blue or blue and red however you want to however you want to call it um whoever's sitting on this point or both players are on the point then it'll just cancel on it won't fire at all until there's only one person you can see that that's why that circle keeps um the the sigils on this on this circle keep igniting or keep going away is because there's just it's that's the channel time for said player you can also see that kind of down below us as well that there's a little bit of a, of a blue bar whoever's sitting on it the most getting that value you can see it go up and down as they step on and off those points just something to highlight as well if you don't know yourselves as this is just going to be chest looter very low they go down right there and that's going to be another pick in favor for the members of few loose screws as they've converted i'd say i'd say they got a decent amount from this bottom lane I, i'd say maybe between the two altars it's pretty even when it comes to the damage they got out top lane has opened up a little bit more but i feel like that's because zergi has been pushing up this entire time wipeout went for the tongue drag didn't connect just that playing within that minion wave is, is so very smart on their end and this is just going to be the invade onto this camp right now from the members of Bulu screws can they take this away? yeah they're gonna be easily able to actually zeratil jumping on there for a second gonna get a little bit of damage but then maybe realizing they're like, wait, I'm not Tyrael. I don't have Holy Ground. I can't just steal this away. Yo, Capiche, how you doing? Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming by. Hey, a non-forfeited non HOTS tournament? What? What was a what was a forfeited tournament? Hey, man, there was a big queue at Watchtower. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm missing a lot of... Uh... Okay, cool. No, I'm not, I'm not missing anything major. 8 to 8 in levels. 0 to 3 in kills. They're trying to step forward right now. Just going to get a little extra damage out onto a couple of these members, then just get that wormhole right out of there. Single altar phase, or excuse me, simple temple phase will be popping up here in the bottom lane. I believe we got a minute 30 on that one as the Brewer 2 is going to be rotating down here. Cleanse comes out from Kaimo Tripson. Roll to disengage out from Chess Leader as well. I Ooh, hold on. We have Touch of Death for the Malthiel as well. I that is that's I love that talent right there because I've I've watched like team fights go and I'm just like wait why didn't any healing just connect or why is there zero value and it's because of of said um uh, I just I just read it a touch of death there we go they're gonna be trying to step forward onto this that's gonna be veggies with the aggression right now going into a brewer too and they they don't get enough right there Con or excuse me the Kael'thas is going to be throwing out a little bit of damage, but this will be the bottom temple activating here in the next 13 seconds Dahaka still pushing out that top lane they've got that global value. 10 will be here in just a second for the members of Gilly Shark. So we got 10 talent tiers on both these sides. Phoenix, massive shove. Nothing really out of the ordinary. Sanctification, no judgment, no fun. Oh, I just, I was like, I was like, oh, I think someone's getting dove on. And then I was like, no, I can't see it on the main map. Kael'thas will be picked off right there. And that's going to be the VP onto one. 
Hanzo with the arrow to slow them down, but that's just going to be... It, the, the stun isn't going to be there that long. Last Rites goes on to Lumpico. They get the kill right there. That's going to be a stack going out in favor for the members of Gilly Shark, and that's going to be the Sanctification, so they're going to continue to fight underneath the, this fort, but that just ends right there, and now they need to watch their health bars. They're getting very, very low on the side of Gilly Shark, and they get the roll to disengage once again. That's going to be Sonic Arrow coming out from the Hanzo, and they force them back. Meanwhile, Malfeo rotates into mid lane to do a little bit of double duty, make sure these lanes are constantly pushed out in their favor, also making sure they're not going to fall behind in experience and soak as the shots are starting to go over in favor for the members of Few Loose Screws and they dive into the back line, go ahead and find a, a Hanzo as well as a Joanna wipeout by themselves right now, goes ahead and burrows, unfortunately won't keep you alive right there, another Void Slash coming out from, excuse me, just the, I believe it's just the regulars, it's not, it's just Cleave, there we go, Void Slash I believe is actually the upgrade. Heroes Fight Series got forfeited a game. Oh no! Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's such a bummer. I, I hate what, like, I, that's... I hate when teams, like, have to, like, I, not that I hate teams when they forfeit, it's just I hate when teams have to forfeit in any way, shape, or form, because it's just, it's such a bummer, because we all just want games. That's all, that's all we want, is just to, is just to watch some fun, fun games and enjoy Heroes of the Storm. 12 to 11 in levels, we're going to be continuing to see a couple of these members hearthing back in the, um, on the side of Gilly Shark, and we are going to be having the uh, Brewer 2 also going ahead and just uh, just getting some wave clear. We'll be able to back right out of there. Boss is going to be pushing up in the bottom lane. I don't know if it will convert the bottom fort, but we still have this bottom lane objective up and available, which is going to be Greymane jumping on this for the first time since that last big engagement we saw a couple minutes ago, or maybe a minute ago. And they'll be able to go ahead and grab that. Meanwhile, Dahaka grabs the camp in the top right. Wipeout should be able to get this on their own. Bottom lane fort does go down. Boss is out as well. Always more games. Seriously. So far, this is our fourth best of three this evening. <laughs> Which I think we're gonna start doing rebroadcast in the morning. I, I don't know. I feel I don't I don't know if people would get would would like that. VP onto a couple. I think that's uh, Stukov and Joanna, because you can see the Condemn coming in. Kaimo trips and steps forward. They're going to try and get the stun on the one. Hanzo with the arrow, but it just goes right behind them. And Lumpico is so very low here. They're going to be trying to step forward with the friendly team. And it's actually just veggies on their own. They're just getting... No, they don't get the kill on the Lumpico. Do they have... Oh, Dahaka actually tried to come in for the flank, and they end up going down. Tyrael gets out as well, and this is going to be mid lane pressure and top lane pressure going against Gilly Shark, but they're able to go ahead and get a lot of good value with that pressure and kill in the bottom lane. We do have another, we should be having another altar phase popping up here, and it is going to be, actually, mm. we had mid bottom, bottom, I think it just randoms at this point, if I'm not mistaken. I was watching the main map there, okay, there we go, so it's going to be top bottom at this point. Especially when Hots uh, is, let call it the ability for, oh, yeah. <laughs> Bindlebot, why? <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> Solm arrow, damn boy. <laughs> uh 13 to 12. We're still just we're still trying to close that experience gap on the right hand side, and they should be able to do that fairly easily once they get to this bottom lane. Let's actually cycle through some of the um some of the other numbers as Kalefoss is actually gonna be working their way towards that mana addict. Actually, they just finished it right there at 10 10 into the game. Oh, are they gonna be able to get wipeout here? This one stun, Chesseter goes in, curse bullet as well. Look at how much damage is on that Dahaka. Tongue drag onto one, but I think that's one of those things where it's just like the whole team is going to be here. That's going to be the arrow going right through once again. Last rights because they have no birds charge, and that's going to be Dahaka going down. Top lane forward is going to be the next target right now because they need to burn this down while they're kind of living within this damage. Divine Shield going to be going on a chest leader right now. That's also going to be the uh, stasis onto a couple as well. A Brewer 2 trying to anchor for the friendly team, getting in that back lane now. Zergy Monster stepping forward as well. They don't have any sort of last rights because that was just used on the Dahaka and they got that cooldown. And now with the camp pushing up into top lane, they're going to be doing. I was going to say they're doing the exact same thing as last game, but I think they're going to break off and go ahead and grab the objective. Malfiel into the top lane. Maybe, I think Zeratul may be just going straight into bottom. Going to get a cleave and clear out this wave. Going to continue to have that pressure up in their favor, as well as, I think... Oh, no, they're going to leave bottom for now. They're going to jump up into the top lane, and this will be focusing in onto the uh, keep front gate. Not insane. How you doing? Thanks for coming by. I hope you're having a great night, my friend. 15 to 13 in levels. Oh, some good damage coming out. That's also going to be Kael'thas spreading that damage. Uh, excuse me, trying to get those chain bombs out. That was the isolation from the Hawk onto Veggies. I mean, they're just going to be able to kind of rotate this back, and it's it's not that big of a deal. And now, bottom lane, we're going to be going ahead and just having this. Uh, so I, th I think they got maybe like an eighth off of this, maybe three sixteenths. <laughs> 
however you want to fraction it, but most of that will be going over in favor for the members of Few Loose Screws, and then it looks like the members of Gilly Shark will jump onto the bottom lane. So the, that means that it's not going to be prioritized in this top lane uh, fort, or this top lane keep, and it will be going for bottom, but it was just as damaged as the other one. And Stark's just sitting still on this point, and you can actually see... Confirmed. They, yeah, they have, no, they have no idea. They actually... The Shiver went behind them. I don't know if they might have seen that right there. There's a possibility for it. We actually see Stark right now. He's going to be diving in. Do they have a VP? No, it's, it's going to be up and available right now. They dive in. That's going to be two members getting VP'd once again. The friendly team is going to be diving in. That also means that, oh, nice busted shield from the uh, from the Joanna right there to deny them that Stark going to be chasing in. Ragnarok is so very low. That's going to be the damage over time, getting the Hanzo kill for them. And this is also going to be Malthiel on that point for the majority of the time. They get all those shots, and that's going to be bottom lane keep at about half its health. They grab a second siege camp to pu push into bottom lane. They have 10 seconds on this boss, 22 seconds on that Hanzo. Looks like the way that they're posturing, they're going for this pickup onto this. They have no idea. Plus, they need to get the clear onto this bottom lane in favor for the members of Few Who Screws. Let's see what we see for the members of Gilly Shark as they're going to be diving onto this boss at this time. They know the Joanna is going to be over on that right hand side. Stark going to be walking away to the right. Oh no, sorry. I got juked by Stark. I was just like, they're walking over here, and I was like, wait, why am I not seeing them? We're on their vision. But that's going to be boss pickup in favor for the members of Gilly Shark. And they'll be pushing that into the bottom lane where the Siege Giants were just cleared out. Single Temple will be popping up here, I believe in 45 seconds if I counted that right. And Dahak has just been pushing up top lane trying to find that 16. Veggies and friends though, they're trying to step forward. That was a nice attempt with the Aldrun's might and the uh, the the Holy Ground, but they still get the kill on the Hanzo. That Curse Bullet is getting so much value as Greymane dived in. And now the boss stepping up into bottom lane. This is going to be the bottom lane keep getting pushed in. And it looks like the members of Gilly Shark want to step forward further forward with this boss and try and end the game. Can they get these picks? I guess not really picks, but can they can they end on this core? 14 seconds on the Hanzo. A Brewer 2 is getting body blocked by a couple. Last Rites goes out, and that's going to be Joanna going down. Another stack going to be going out in favor for Zergi Monster, and it looks like the members of Gilly Shark are going to be taking this game number two on... Sky Temple, massive shove onto one, but that's not going to keep them from going. And Hanzo with the air at the last second. GG's over to Gilly Shark. They take the series 2 0. Left to make tacos. <laughs> Left to make tacos 11 minutes in, and no win looks a lot better than last game. <laughs> oh man, that was. That was a 43 minute series. Do we, do you guys want me to like cast a replay or something? That was so quick. Gilly Shark wanted to go to sleep early tonight. Seems like it. Stark will be interview. Okay. Gilly Shark's so on point. They're already here. So we're going to be, uh, let me just go ahead and change the audio really quick. Alrighty, well, um, before I can even ask who it's going to be, I'm already told that Stark is going to be our interviewee. How you doing? Congratulations on your 2-0 victory, Mr. Offlane. Mm -hmm. And time. <laughs> We're done. That's it. That's I... our NGS any percent glitchless run. Oh, yeah. glitchless. Yeah, glitchless, yeah. Oh, I didn't know we were doing that category now for Here's the Storm. Oh, yeah, they banned Samurai, so it had to be glitchless this time. Ah, uh, I see. Well, let's start mm -hmm. out here. Cursed Hollow. I I don't think mm -hmm. I've ever seen um, I don't think I've ever seen your team play that aggressive and that style on that map. Can you talk a little bit about where that came from? Because it was just constant pressure into top. Was it just let's kind of split their attention? Can you yeah, talk about the game the one draft because final. it was just so aggressive and good? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah, it was the Beast Finals where the team we were up against drafted Abatha first, and we were like, sweet, let's just kill him in seven minutes. And we drafted us. It was still Surrender Greymane's area, and it was probably like an Arthas, because that's what Jinx he does, is he shows up and kills people on Arthas. And something else. Darker, probably? I don't know. But yeah, those three heroes, and then you just go kill Abatha, because he can't do anything. Because he's like a level 10 plus hero, and he doesn't defend. He has a mule. He fixes problems, but He's not like an active defender, you know? He's no like Chromie or something. So you just go kill him. It was it was That's such it. a ridiculous like seven minutes and twenty seconds on the dot. Yeah. Jeez. That's what I, I said. Like people people in this I think Kaima was saying, Alright, so what are they gonna do when 
when they get 10, how are the team fights going to go? I'm like, they're not going to get 10. This game is going to be over. Because that's just a draft win. I I don't have words for, for that game and that draft and how aggressive it was. Because it was just so entertaining. It was just really, really... It was just entertaining and fun. Like, thank you so much for that first game. But now moving over to Sky Temple, was the intention Juice Pirates? Because they banned out the Lieutenant Morales, but it seemed a little bit like a juke in a sense. I can't lie to you, mate. It was. Okay. But here's the thing. They can ban Samuro, or they can ban Morales, or they can ban Zeratul. Or if they ban all three, then we still got like Medivh and Diablo. So they can't ban everything. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, we wanted to juice pirates because we wanted to win even faster in the first game. But yeah, they ban Morales. So what are you going to do? I mean, we can pick Morales in the first two picks. And then it's like, oh, you pick Sky Temple and then you pick Morales. And then they just pick like five false stats and then we don't do anything. Yeah, that was I was wondering about the false dead ban, but I guess it was more or less like. There's there's control yeah, that like, Gus brings into the table. Yeah, it's like if, if we fly onto the core of a or something if they get the gust just right they can interrupt the sanct and then we're all gone and that, that's it exactly we don't kill that building so yeah it, it was it was but, been wrong, i think so. it's the yeah. fastest gilly shark matchup i've ever i've ever casted before and i think you guys went for a new split and you managed to get it and that's that's a, that's a big highlight for you i, I mm -hmm. want to say like i think the fastest i ever seen an s division match was like six minutes and something so you're not too far off from s division yeah yeah <laughs> Um, but, you know, but but these games excuse me go ahead just gotta work out some kinks you know there's kinks to work going. out yeah i didn't pick like samurai oh well there's yeah there's okay, definitely up there. <laughs> but no stark yeah. these games were so much fun to cast and this interview has been such a blast before i let you go any shots that you'd like to give the uh the floor is all yours yeah um shout out to gilly for having a birthday like two days ago yes uh, that happened. Uh, She's probably like eating cake and playing board games. That's cool. Uh, shout out to you for casting. I'm sorry that the games were so short. I will try and show good games for our fans the next time we play. <laughs> but Kaimo's an old man. He has to sleep. He's going to die of old age tomorrow. So we've just got to get these games in while we can. Uh, shout out to Vedu for playing like a level 7 Tyrael like a god. Shout out to the rest of the team for doing heroes things as well. Uh, what else? Oh, Cat Peach gave us some draft advice, so shout out to her. Um, is Bandit there? You can have one. He's yeah, cool. he's there. He's chilling. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, shout out to the rest of the team who were here cheering us on and or asleep and or at work. So, Jinxie, Romedy, Kage. Uh, that's it. Done it. Nice. <laughs> I did. I did the interview. No, thank you so much for the Nailed interview it. and and the and the shoutouts and everything. It was it was such a blast to cast these games, and I can't wait to see mm -hmm. you further down in the Nexus Gaming series season. Yeah, greetings from Germany. See ya. Have a great night.